Growing up, I didn't know much about Italy. I didn't know which towns my grandparents were from. I didn't know this place existed until coming here in my 20s. In those days, I never imagined that I'd eventually spend so much time here. I was completely focused on career goals. So when I was asked whether I'd like to inherit this house and land, I had mixed feelings about the idea. I knew that accepting would come with many problems to resolve and new demands on my time and attention. But slowly, a vision of a possible future started to take shape. Since then, my wife Rika and I have been coming to do restoration work. And our son visited for the first time last year. This time we're planning to stay inside the house itself. There are things we wouldn't notice about the building unless we stay here. First we'll need to do some minor repairs and set up a simple living space. It's been raining non-stop for weeks, so we haven't been able to bring supplies up yet. Most of the projects I had planned for this trip are outdoor work, which will need to be delayed now due to the rain. Instead, we'll have to come up with other projects and learn how to do them on site. Initially, I didn't know anything about stone houses. But Giovanni and I attended a course on lime mortars together a few years ago. Thinking back, learning about lime was when we really started collaborating on this project. And I think that working together has drawn us closer as a family. It's actually quite dry. There's no no hint of moisture up here. That's a bit of a surprise. This is where I accidentally broke those two tiles when doing the tree removal last year. And it's completely dry, at least up in the attic. I do notice that there's an issue with water kind of falling down onto the windowsill and rolling into the room. Um, but it seems like that's due to the windowsill being installed incorrectly. Um, but it's fixable. Easy fix, at least for the short term.
see that. Yeah. That fell off there? Yeah. But did you notice it's it's all joinery here? So this is like a wooden peg. Yeah, I see a peg here. Yep. But there are nails here. Yeah. For the attaching to the Wall? Yeah. Well, wait, where do you think this window was? This one, this is probably up one there. Of those? This one probably, because actually, my grandmother told me that that one mm -hmm. is not original to the house. I think they had that installed. Ah, uh, that's why they're in all the 50s. cement there. Right. It's it's got a ah. cement frame, whereas this one is carved stone. Right. Uh, okay. So. This one was up there. Yeah, I've only found... Installed from the inside. We might Wait, actually no. have two of these. Yep, this is the outside. This is the outside. Yep, but because the, the there's nails? the glass here. Where would the nails go? Um, I, there was probably a wooden frame. Uh, like, you'd have a wooden, wooden frame, inner frame. Inner frame, and then you attach it. And then this it. would be secured to that inner okay. frame. Yeah, the inside looks concrete. nice. It looks pretty nice. Wait, this is the inside yeah. I'm showing now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is what it would have looked like from the inside. They've got these like inner shutters that open but keep the glass shutters closed. And then the main yeah. ones open. Um, and since it's original to the house, or more original, that would be a cool thing to recreate. Yeah. Um, I like the color too. Yeah. Maybe we could take measurements of it and um, make a copy. Sure. It has been raining non-stop since we got here a little over a week ago. We've been trying to do some interior work, uh, but it's slow going. I had a lot of things delivered to one of my neighbors to bring up here and I've had to bring it up by hand because the car can't get through um, this muddy road. That's okay though. I feel strong today. Uh, almost finished, but one of the packages is just a little too heavy for me to handle. There's water running under here. Some kind of... I can hear it. Oh, I'm so curious to see what's under there. It's time to light a fire. Let's do that. Uh, I'd like to get, like to get dry.
There are some clues that this house once looked much different than it does today. The lower part of the house was built when my grandmother was a child. Before that, it's likely the second floor extended further out than it does today. If you look at the corner of the building, you'll see there are stones jutting out, and there's also a doorway that was filled in. These old farmhouses were often custom built, with the household's specific farming needs in mind. If the building code allows it, we might eventually redesign parts of the building to suit our needs better, but I would want to do so in a way that's still grounded in the local architectural style. We'll be using this room as our bedroom. I'm removing loose plaster so that it doesn't fall while we're sleeping. It's a three coat lime plaster system, so basically just sand and lime, and over the years the top coat has separated. I like the fact that most of the materials in this building come directly from nature. Much of it could be returned to the earth without doing harm. Having electricity and internet access in particular is crucial for us. In fact, internet access is the foundation of everything we'd like to eventually do here. Fortunately, we have a direct line of sight to a 4G tower. We've already tested a mobile data router and it works quite well. Before the internet and the possibility of remote work, the story about rural versus urban living was that in rural settings, employment options are limited. There's no access to high quality education, access to culture is limited, that sort of thing. Certainly 100 years ago, that was true. But how true is that today? And how true will it be in 20 years time? When my grandparents left Italy, it took weeks to travel from the Italian countryside to their destinations across the Atlantic. Today, the same trip takes less than a day. I think the line between what used to be a dichotomous choice is starting to blur. 
The decision to keep this place isn't about rejecting modernity or glamorizing the past. It's more about looking forward and seeing possibilities for new models of living that could be made viable thanks to the internet. While this project only represents a small part of what we're doing in life right now, it has an important role to play in a broader long-term strategy. It'll take several days of sun before we can drive up to the house. Every time it seemed like the rain had passed, it would rain again. This went on for weeks. I got tired of waiting for the ground to dry, so I just started bringing things up by hand. I did a rough estimate of the total weight of things carried, and it came out to over a thousand kilograms, carried 150 meters uphill. That's over 2,200 pounds of materials. Being slowed down by the rain has been so frustrating. I'm trying to stay calm though. There's no sense in filling this place with negative feelings and bitter memories. Growing up, I kind of hated the idea of doing physical work, but I've been surprised by how much I enjoy it here. I'm sure it helps that everything I'm doing is by my own choice, but I think the more significant reason is that this work is so meaningful to me. There's the meaning as a multi-generational property, the role it might play in our lives and in our son's life. There's the family history I've learned in the process of all this, the lessons learned from that history, an understanding of my own life in the context of it. Going to work, let's see. I also think our son might be getting more out of these trips than I realized initially. There are the obvious things like the exposure to Italian language and culture, seeing the beautiful landscapes here, and having the freedom to explore our property. But beyond that, I think there's enormous value in him just seeing us do this work. Yes. Yes, it does. Good. I hope it'll help him learn to be comfortable with pursuing his own ideas 
and just figuring out how to move forward, even when there's not an obvious path to take. From the beginning of our relationship, Rika and I have always been reading books together and having long conversations about the things we're thinking about. I kind of see our restoration work as an extension of that dynamic, except now there's something tangible being created out of our shared learning. And slowly, our son is joining us in that dynamic of learning and growing together. He watches us closely. He understands our objectives and is eager to help. And as I look around at paintbrush strokes and trowel marks on mortar, I relive the memories of us doing that work together. It turns this building into something more than just stone. It makes me feel something. And I hope that someday he'll feel what I feel when he comes back here. <laughs>